Hello and welcome to Cynthia's presentation for the OMG technical meeting in Chicago. We start the demonstration of Cynthia for a UAV, a configurable UAV, and we are starting with a systemal block definition diagram of the UAV. This is what the architect has built in the very first step. He's defined a UAV with certain value properties related to the performance, the platform of the UAV, the core structure of the UAV, uh, the software that goes on the UAV, the flight software and the mission software, the payload, which is sensors that the UAV is going to have for achieving its mission, and the communication systems, both with the line of sight and the, and the satellites that are around the UAV. And at this point from here, we will launch the Cyndia dashboard. And the Cinder dashboard shows us all the repositories to which we can connect it. Doors repositories, GitHub, Jama, Jira, local file system, several models like Excel and NX and Simulink, MySQL databases, Team Center, Vigil, and many more that they're working that we are working on. The first thing we will do is actually go to the connection manager where I can see the SysML model on the left hand side, and I can see multiple repositories on the right hand side, which I can toggle back and forth. I'm actually going to go to the requirements database, in this case, a doors ng repository that is available at my company. I'm going to go to the unmanned aerial vehicle project in the doors ng repository, and I'm going to look at the requirements that my team has defined for this UAV. In particular, I'm going to look at the structural, the performance, and the functional requirements. And what I intend to do is I want to bring these requirements uh, from the doors repository into SysML and, and so that we can actually allocate those requirements to the, to the structure. I'm going to drag the structural requirement to requirements over here. Click yes. I'm going to drag the performance requirements. And I'm going to repeat the same thing for the functional requirements. As you can see, it's created a structure uh, of the requirements in SysML. Because we used this model transform connection, it has brought over the complete structure. When I go to my SysML model, I can actually see the requirements right here. What I'll do here at this point is create a diagram. In this case, you see it'll be a requirements diagram. And I'm going to bring over the structural requirements here, uh, the performance requirements, and the functional requirements. And I'm going to bring over my configurable UAV. And I'm going to expose its parts. And I'm going to drag out the software expose its parts and I'm going to drag out the platform component and I'm going to create certain satisfy relationships the first one from this platform to the structural requirement and then from the mission software to the functional requirements and then one from the UAV to the performance requirements so we've created a few satisfied relationships, allocated the structure of the UAV at high level to the top level requirements. At this point in time, I can actually see the connections that uh, have been created between the requirements that have been brought over from Doors NG and uh, created in SysML. I can expand those. I can see persistent connections that have been created here. I can also see these connections in the Connection Summary tab. And I can also go to this in the dashboard and then open the visualization window where I can see all of these connections. In this case, I see the SysML connections in purple and the doors connections in green. And here are the SysML connections. So just a visual way of showing the connections. I can move this graph as in when I feel to my model over here. The next thing I'm going to do is actually go to a uh, Windchill repository. And in Windchill, I'm actually going to pick up this UAV platform and I can see in this case the platform and I can see different versions of the platform right and I can open up a specific version and I can actually see its structure so I'm going to drag this platform over to the structure package and in this case it's going to bring over the platform information and its children including the attributes and I want to pick up the gold mask as one of the attributes I do want to bring over it's going to bring that over into my SysML model so now if I look at my platform component, it's actually got the fuselage and the landing gear and the tail, which have been received from Winchell. Again, as I see, uh, these connections have been created. If I go to the structure and I look at the platform, I can now see the connections that have been brought over. If I go to my SysML model now, I can see that this is now a Winchell part 
and I try to expose its parts, I can see all the parts of the platform here again. I'm going to save the model and then uh, I'm going to launch the dashboard again and this time I'm actually going to go to a MySQL database. And here I'm going to expand the instruments and I want to bring over certain instruments from the MySQL database. So I'm going to create a package here first. Call instruments. And I'm actually going to go here. And I'm going to drag over a few instruments. I'm going to get this thermal camera. This one over here. and then I'm going to go back to my SysML model and make a few adjustments so here I would like to say that the payload is not just a collection of sensors but in particular it's a collection of radars and a collection of thermal cameras and a collection of video cameras right so I'm going to take this do a little bit of refactoring the radar the same thing the video cameras and then I'll save the model and now I've brought over the specific uh, radar instruments, specific thermal cameras, and I've shown that with a specialization relationship. And this actually came over from the MySQL database already. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the Cinder dashboard here, and I'm actually going to connect to GitHub. Right. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the Intercax repository, go to Cinder demonstrations, go to the branches, go to the master branch, and look at all the commits. And I'm going to go to the files in the master branch and here's the UAV folder that are being developed and I'm going to create some reference connections in this case I just want to refer to the software code that is being developed for the flight software and the mission software so I'm going to do a drag and drop from the module in github to my block in SysML and I'm going to go to mission software and do the same thing with here and so that that establishes that connection as well and at this point in time I can actually go to, to visualize and say view all connections and if I do that I can now see a lot more connections in Cyndia, right? I can actually see, uh, if I zoom zoom here, I can actually see the SysML model in purple, which is right over here. And I can see the MySQL database here, the, the instruments we brought in from there. I can see the GitHub thing, right? So I'm gonna do that. And I can see the doors repositories and everything else. And if you hover your mouse over it, you can actually see on the blue box right here what the information about that thing. Uh, you can also see some intermodel analytics. Uh, so for example, I can see the number of connections that are there between the different model elements coming from different repositories. I can see how many artifacts are participating in those connections and I can get an idea of the connection density that tells me, uh, you know, the half, half connection, half uh, uh, point 0.5 is the connection density. Uh, this is the displayed versus the totals. So in this case, I can actually hide so if I hide the doors artifacts, you can see the display values will change, but I can see now uh, how many connections are being shown here. I can hide the GitHub ones. I can also hide the windshield, and so I can turn them back on and off, right? So it's very good in terms of um, uh, narrowing down on specific elements or repository that you want to focus on. So that's how it works. So now from here, I'm actually going to go to the windshield repository, and I'm going to go here and type in and add an electrical system, right? So I'm going to pick up an electrical system that I've added to the platform. So it's change happening in the windshield repository. And I'm going to check in this part. It's 
the changes to A14. And I'm also going to go to, to uh, doors and I'm going to look at my performance requirements, in particular the speed requirement. And I'm going to make a change here from 100 kilometers per hour. We want the UAV to achieve a maximum speed of 110 kilometers per hour. Save, hit done. And at this point, I can go back to uh, Cyndia and I can right click on the package and say compare, compare system and target. So basically now it's going to compare uh, the, across the connections, the changes that have happened on either side, the system side or the uh, other repository side. And so remember we have made two changes, one for requirements and one provincial. So now here's the results that we get and I can see all the greens. I can scroll here or and then I can see what, what is the issue. So in this case, we see there's a platform. I'm going to do version A13, but the latest is version A14 in Windchill, where an electrical system has been added. So that's that's one difference. I also see the maximum speed requirement has changed, where the description has has, has changed. And right now, this one says that it's you know 100 kilometers per hour, but this one says it's 110 kilometers per hour. So at this point in time, because I know the changes, I can actually go, uh, you know, do it do it here, sync target to SysML, or because I know the differences, I can actually do it at the right level. Sync target to SysML for the platform. And then I'm going to go to performance requirements, go to speed. Hit target to system on this one. And now if I come to the model, I can see that the electrical system has been brought in here in the platform. And if I look at the speed requirement, for example, I can see I have seen this 110 kilometer per hour update has been done. So we can actually synchronize the changes. And remember, we can also go the other way around, so which means if changes were there, we can also go to SysML to target. So we could override those changes as well. But it gives you the full freedom to, to make those changes and synchronize bidirectionally, assuming you have the authority to do so. Now we're going to do something more interesting. We're going to go to, to Jira right now. So we, I, what I want to do is I want to take this architecture and I want to push it over to Jira to track the progress of our development on this architecture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this UAV and drag it to the unmanned vehicle, create a reference connection or create an issue structure and then create a reference connection. So this would effectively create an issue structure based upon the block structure and I hit OK. And it'll start creating the tickets in Jira. So now I can see that it's actually created an issue structure in Jira based upon the block structure. So if I go to this one issue and try to open it up directly from here, I can actually see that in here. I can go to this unmanned aerial vehicle project and uh, browse through all the tasks that have been created. So every block has been uh, transformed into a task in Jira and it's actually connected. So we can track the development of that piece of the architecture in Jira uh, as a project management tool. I can go to this UAV task, uh, which deals with the UAV system. And I can see that it relates to the software platform communications and the payload. So that structure has been brought over. If I go to the software, I can see it to the mission software and the flight software uh, and so on and so forth. So we've brought a full issue structure and I can now start uh, tracking the development of Jira uh, in this. Now, one last piece I want to do is I want to go and connect to Team Center here. And I also want to take over the uh, block structure I have created by combining information coming from Windchill and from the MySQL database and, and push it to my PLM system. And so now I've got my home folder, I've got the UAV. I'm going to drag this UAV block structure actually and generate a PLM item structure based upon that. So now we can see that we've got the UAV structure in here, I've got the configurable UAV and its structure over here. And it's the first version, and if I expand that, I can see its children. You can see all that. And actually, I can also open it up in Team Center from here. But now let's look at what our visualization map looks like for the connections. If I go to View All Connections, I can now see a lot more stuff happening here, right? 
I can actually see Team Center repositories. So I've got the UAV that's actually connected to Team Center. I've actually got uh, the MySQL and uh, Doors and other repositories that are here. Uh, we've got over 115 connections, and uh, if I uncheck Team Center now, you can see the original ones. Uh, let's see what these two blue dots are. They were the uh, they were the coming from GitHub. So we saw we see those. These are Doors ng modules. Uh, we see these are coming from Windshield. So now you can see a truly uh, federated total system model uh, with SysML on one end of the periphery of this and then uh, connections radiating from the SysML model to all the different disciplines. And it tells us truly that we, we work in a, a federated environment where data could be in multiple repositories, the architectures in SysML, and you are really building this graph, uh, a logical architecture of the system irrespective of where the data is coming from, irrespective of where the models are, and you're tracking the versions of these models and you're visualizing how they're connected and, and things that you can do with these connections, starting with analytics and in the future going to what up scenarios. Now let's look at another kind of visualization. If I right click on the CUV and I go to Cyndia view neighboring artifacts, I can see the configurable UAV and the intramodal connections crossing the boundaries of the SML tool, one to the JIRA issue or JIRA task that, that is governing that UAV, and the team center item that got created out of it, plus the part properties coming from the SML model. This UAV is made up of the communication, payload, platform, and the software subsystems, and the satisfy relationship to the requirement in, in SML. Now, if I click on the platform here, I can actually see the platform uh, component. I can see its part properties, Right, and then I can see it's coming from Windshield Platform A14, and it's also in Team Center, and then it's got a reference to a Jira ticket. So I can start seeing connections across the map. Uh, if I go back here and I launch another kind of visualization, a third kind, which shows the same thing, the neighboring artifacts, but in sort of a tree layout fashion, I can actually see the UAV uh, with the Jira ticket and the Team Center item. And if I expand the platform again, I can see the platform has coming from Windshield, and I see the things over here. Uh, and I, I can expand and look at the things coming from system. So I can progressively expand this and, and play with it. Now let's move to another part of this demonstration. Here, we are actually going to play with Simulink. So the propulsion system, which is the jet engine in the platform uh, that we have, the UAV platform, this uh, jet engine actually has a, a gas turbine being used. And we have ironed out the structure of the gas turbine. In particular, I uh, used an internal block diagram in SysML to identify the flows in the gas turbine. We've got the soil burner that takes in the fuel mixture, uh, and then we've got the axial compressor that gets the uh, compressed air, and then we burn the uh, fuel air mixture to produce this hot gas mix, uh, which powers the turbine and produces power and produces some exhaust, and then uh, we've got some power that's being used to drive the transmission that uh, feeds into the compressor. So what we do now with the Cinder dashboard is we can actually take the um, we can actually go here and go to our UAV model and then take the gas turbine and actually drag and drop it to the UAV and it asks me a few options. In this case, you can generate a Simulink model out of the gas turbine IBD and hit go and start generating the Simulink model. And now we have the Simulink model created of the gas turbine, and I can actually open it right from here uh, from the dashboard. And this will bring up MATLAB and Simulink, where we'll be able to see the Simulink model that has been generated. So now you can actually see the Simulink model that has been generated. Uh, this looking very similar to our original IBD that we had from, Sys uh, from SysML, right? So we've got the, the fuel mixture coming into the soil burner, uh, going into, uh, you know, and, and then the fuel coming in from, uh, the air coming in from the axle compressor, going into the turbine uh, as a mixture, uh, producing, you know, power and, um, you know, hot uh, exhaust, and then providing some part of the power to the shaft to drive the uh, axle compressor. In the next part of this demonstration, we're going to play with CAD. Uh, and there are several use cases with Cyndia and, and the CAD domain, but we're going to start with something very simple in the context of this UAV. So the first thing that has happened is that the UAV platform uh, has a certain space in it that has been allocated to put all the instruments, there are all the payloads in it. 
And so we have modeled that space uh, using uh, some primitive geometric features. So we've identified the key center of gravity uh, for the platform uh, and the cuboid, the payload volume that's available. And then for each of the instruments that we brought in from the MySQL database has their own shape, right? Has their own bounding box. And so what we want to generate is the payload volume uh, in the UAV, uh, you know, of the UAV. And then uh, we have the shapes of the different instruments. And the mechanical designer's job is going to be to take the payload volume, uh, which is for the platform, this, the space that's been allocated, and fit all the instruments in that payload volume. So the way we do it is we first launch Cyndia here. And we actually go to um, a folder on my computer called NXCAD. And we basically have, you know, the platform uh, in which we have specified the uh, payload volume. And I drag the platform over to the UAV payload space. And I, this time I generate an NXCAD model. And it's going to initialize NX and start generating the NXCAD. So this is the volume that's been generated. And I want to look at the wireframe of this volume. And then here's the center of gravity that has been gotten here. And then that's the payload volume. So this is the volume that's been made available uh, to the mechanical designer inside the aircraft platform uh, to fit all the instruments in there. So now we're going to go back to Cyndia and we're going to repeat the same thing with some of the other instruments. So in this case, let's start with uh, radar R2, do the same thing and thermal camera TC1, do the same thing. In this case, you know that the radar R2 is a sphere and the thermal camera TC1 is a cylinder. So we're gonna go back and open their models. And so that's the sphere, that's the radar. And uh, the thermal camera that we had there looks like a, c a cylinder uh, shape. So there it is. And so the job of the mechanical designer, as I said, is going to be to fit the, uh, use the payload volume and fit the instruments inside the payload volume. And that's, that's the key part of it. Uh, as you can see right here, if I go back now to Cyndia's dashboard and I open up, uh, visualize all the connections, I can see a lot more connections. Now I also see uh, NX CAD artifacts and Simulink model coming into the mix, right? So there are more elements that have been gotten here. Uh, we've got 92 connections right now uh, from different parts of uh, the uh, architecture. We've got some CAD, we've got Theme Center, we've got Windchill in here. So you can now see how our interconnected federation of model elements is, get, is growing bigger, right? how our graph is growing bigger. And this is a very simple scenario and a realistic scenario in large uh, systems, this can grow very large, probably of the order of millions of connections. Now, I want to show some other another use case with uh, with Cyndia. So, we want to create a, a create a temporary package here for a toy car model that I'm going to fetch from NX, and I'll show you what it looks like. So, if if I go to an existing CAD model, which is a, an assembly, and I'm going to start with a very simple one uh, to illustrate the idea. So, if I go to this toy car assembly, it's got this assembly, and I can now see its part structure of the assembly, right? I can see the, the spare wheel, the rear axle, the body, and the front axle. If I go to the front axle, I can see its children. Now, what happens if you want to get this information from an existing CAD model? Uh, you can just drag and drop it uh, from uh, the CAD tool to Cyndia, and you can actually generate a, a block structure out of this uh, in the model. And if I'm going to create a diagram here, um, a block definition diagram, You can see the kind of information we're able to pull through. So this is a toy car, and I can expose its parts and values. I can see I can get the mass properties of the toy car, right? If I zoom into this, you can see what we're able to get. We're able to get its uh, mass, its volume, its density, surface area, center of gravity, and the bounding box of the toy car assembly. And I can simply take out this front axle, right, part, and I can also expose its parts and its values. So I can see the same information has been received uh, for the toy car front axle assembly. But also if I look at this association block that's been created, this is representing the placement of the axle as the front axle in the toy car, right? So it's the component placement. And if I look at its values, I can actually see that I've been able to get 
the uh, transformation matrix, right? So for example, in this case, I can see the actual vectors, the translation vectors and the rotation matrix that has been obtained from the CAT tool. So this tells you, it gives you an idea that Cydia is able to get all of this information from uh, a simple model like this, right? So you can play with this and get a sense of how it all works. Now let's pick up another model, uh, a, a different one. So I'm gonna switch over to a Creo CAT model here. I'm gonna pick click over um, this uh, UAV we have in here. Uh, and let's see if I can open this guy up here. So we can see this UAV and its parts. I open this. And now I'm seeing a UAV model uh, coming in Creo, right? Uh, I can see it's, uh, it's complete 3D geometry right from here, uh, launched from within Cynthia. And, uh, and this is another one uh, that we brought in uh, again, if we're booking this up from GrabCAD, and if I look at this assembly over here, uh, this is a pretty big assembly of a uh, of a toy plane, but a very complex toy plane called the, um, the Cube J. And if I expand its part structure, you can see a lot more parts in it. Right, so probably there are hundreds of parts in this uh, very complex CAD assembly. And uh, we can actually open it up from here. We can do a drag and drop here if I want to. I can actually open it from here uh, in Cyndia. And let's see what the Creo model for this one looks like. And we can unselect the datum dis displays. And actually we can see what this one looks like, right? It's kind of a plain design with multiple parts. And so we've been able to test Cyndia with these kinds of designs as well. One last piece I'd like to show you uh, is this ability in Cyndia to do searches. We have a search built into the Cyndia. So if I click on uh, a specific uh, item and I hit a search, I can actually get that item right from within uh, Cyndia. So here I'm searching for an item uh, you know, in a specific project or specific ID in, and looking for a doors and G requirement. I can go to, for example, a MySQL database and I can um, look at the search panel in the MySQL database. And I can do a simple search uh, uh, by selecting a specific database, uh, in this case, the instrument database, and selecting a specific table like thermal cameras and adding filters. Or I can do an advanced query where I can type MySQL query right in here. I can go to Windchill, uh, for instance, and I can look at this one, and I can go to the UAV platform project, or I can pick up any of these projects from here. And then I can type in uh, something with a wildcard, for instance. Uh, and so uh, in this case, I get a jet engine. So I can do these searches across the repositories and then I can do these drag and drops on the searches, right? So if I go to, um, for example, a windchill repository uh, like I was on before, uh, and if I go to my uh, UAV platform and if I do my search for jet engine uh, and I hit search, I can then just drag and drop it very much the very same way that I was drag and dropping from this panel. So if you don't know something, you know, where something is located, which project, and you know information like its name or partial name or part number, you can do searches in, in, in Cyndia uh, and be able to um, get it from there. And you've also seen how we are able to open Cyndia from any part of the model. So I can, all the menus are accessible here. I can look at open connected artifacts and it shows me I have multiple in here. I've got a a Jira ticket and I've got a team center item. If I click on this one, it will open up uh, Jira directly from uh, from here. I can do the same thing from right here. I can go to Cyndia and I can look at open connected artifacts here. Again, the same thing would come. This time it would open me a uh, doors repository uh, and take me to the requirement uh, in doors and G. So uh, different ways of accessing those connections, different ways of accessing those links and reaching out to them from different parts of Sindhya. Thank you, and I really hope you enjoyed the presentation.